Response to the attack on Saint Cyril. Attributes of the moral character of Saint Cyril. It is necessary to outline the character of Saint Cyril in order to correct the very bleak image painted by Dr. Yusuf Zidane in his novel. Saint Cyril's mother was the sister of Saint Theophilus, who became the 23rd Pope of Alexandria. Saint Theophilus and his sister were still young when they became orphans, and Saint Athanasius the Apostolic, the 20th Pope of Alexandria, raised them, watched over them, and cared for them spiritually and culturally. Hence, Theophilus became patriarch. His virtuous sister married and gave birth to the great saint who became Saint Cyril, the 24th Patriarch of the See of Saint Mark, a successor to his uncle. The church entitled him the Pillar of Faith. Thus we find that Saint Cyril was raised and developed in a profound spiritual atmosphere, rooted initially by his mother, who was reared by Saint Athanasius the Apostolic, and whose brother became Patriarch of the See of Saint Mark. It is not reasonable or appropriate to attribute to Saint Cyril such reprehensible claims, since, as we have seen, he had such a blessed upbringing. The author describes Pope Cyril in an appalling manner, comparing him with the crucified in a manner not worthy of this individual, who was tireless in his toil and suffering in defence of orthodox faith that had been once delivered to the saints. On page 146 of the novel, Heeper says. Saint Cyril peered out of the gallery, its walls completely plated with gold. It had one balcony which had above it a large wooden cross. A statue of Jesus made of coloured plaster hung upon it. Dark red blood fell down from the front of the crucified Christ and on his hands and feet. I looked at the torn clothes on the statue of Jesus and then to the ornamented bishop's vestments. Jesus was clothed in torn rags exposing his chest and most of his organs while the vestments of the bishop were adorned with golden threads covering all of him and barely showing his face. The hand of Jesus was empty from the wreckage of our world, and in the hand of the archbishop there was a scepter, and the intensity of its luster indicates, I think, that it is made of pure gold. Above Jesus' head there was a crown of thorns of suffering. On the head of the bishop there is the bright golden episcopal crown. Jesus, it seemed to me, willingly accepted the sacrifice of himself on the cross of redemption, and it seemed to me that Cyril came to catch the peripheries of heaven and earth. Egypt was a Roman colony which was compelled to send wheat to Constantinople, as it is historically known, and also as acknowledged by the author in his novel as Azil. The Egyptian people did not enjoy prosperity and wealth under the yoke of Roman colonialism. The fathers and patriarchs of the church lived a simple life at that time, without the abundance of wealth and pomp described by the author. Evidence of this is when they had been residents for a long time in Ephesus at the Third Ecumenical Council. The emperor ordered them not to leave Ephesus until they had reached unified decisions. Saint Cyril sent a letter to the priests and people of Constantinople telling them that some of the aged fathers had departed from this world due to poor living conditions that they had suffered during the length of their stay at Ephesus. If Saint Cyril had an abundance of money, he would have been able to assist those fathers and save their lives. Here is what Hefley mentions as spoken by Saint Cyril in his letter in this regard. The whole synod was in a very exhausted condition. Several members were dead and the others so impoverished that they had been forced to sell their possessions in order to procure the means of subsistence. Also, since the dawn of Christianity, Coptic churches in Egypt have never made use of statues. The author falsely claims that Saint Cyril incited people to kill Hypatia and cites a verse from the Bible, I came not to bring peace but a sword. The author fabricates the following words, falsely claiming that they were spoken by Saint Cyril on page 152. They want to rebuild the great temple of the idols which was destroyed upon their heads years before, and they desire to reconstruct their abandoned school which propagates the strained minds, and they seek to recall the Jews from their quarter where they lived inside your city's walls. But the Lord, O soldiers of the Lord, will never accept this. He will frustrate their despicable efforts, will dispel their ailing dreams, and will exalt the prestige of this great city through your hands. As long as you are truly the soldiers of the Lord, and as long as you are truly the soldiers of the truth, 
Our Lord Jesus Christ was sincere when he pronounced with enlightened speech, saying, The truth purifies you. Be sanctified, O sons of the Lord, and purify your land from the impurity of the pagans. Cut off the tongues that speak evil, throw them with their sins into the sea, and wash their grave iniquities. Follow the words of the Saviour, the words of truth, the words of the Lord, knowing that our Lord Jesus Christ has said to us, we who are his sons throughout the ages, that I came not to bring on earth but a sword. Where has the author acquired such absurd statements, claiming that they are the words of Saint Cyril and words uttered from the mouth of Jesus Christ? Our Lord Jesus Christ did not say, as it is reported by the author, the truth purifies you, but rather, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. John 8:32. It will be revealed from the sayings of St. Cyril and from his commentary on this verse the invalidity of Dr. Zidane's claims without any evidence. In the commentary of the biblical verse, do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you not at all, but rather division. Luke 12:51. He speaks of peace and reconciliation. From St. Cyril's commentary on the Gospel of St. Luke, homily 94. And yet Christ is our peace according to the scriptures. He hath broken down the middle wall. He hath united the two people in one new man, so making peace, and hath reconciled both in one body unto the Father. Ephesians 2.14 He hath united the things below to them that are above. How therefore did he not come to give peace upon earth? That peace is an honorable and truly excellent thing when given by God. For the prophets also say, Lord, grant us peace, for Thou hast given us all things. Isaiah 26.12On page 152 of the novel, Heeper says, The crowds shook with agitation, to the extent that their agitation reached its aim. Cyril, in an enthusiastic, thunderous and seizing voice, reiterated the words of Jesus Christ, I came not to bring peace on earth, but a sword. The crowd became increasingly agitated and nearly reached with its intensity the point of madness. People started repeating the sentence after him, and they did not stop except when a cry like thunder interrupted their repetitions. That giant, who usually ends the fiery sermons of Sunday, I mean Peter, the reader of the Church of Caesarean, that exploded from the crowd, saying, With the help of heaven, we will cleanse the land of the Lord from the agents of Satan. The bishop and the people became silent, except Peter the reader. Some repeated his words after him, and one of them added a horrible song. In the name of the living God, we will demolish the house of the idols and build a new home for the Lord. With the help of heaven, we will purify the land of the Lord from the agents of Satan. In the name of the living God, we will demolish the house of idols.